Welcome to Eileen Fisher's Women Together. My name is Antoinette, and I'm very happy to see everybody today. Um, just gonna go into our gallery view, one of my favorite things to do. Today's um, topic is centering and connecting, and I think I need it just as much as all of us. So um, I warm welcome to everybody, and I know that we're all still coming in, so I'm just giving a minute or two for everybody to land. And I'll just give a little reminder for those who may not remember um, or may be just joining us, a warm welcome if you have not been with us before. Um, we have been coming together in this way weekly for a number of weeks during this um, pandemic time, but we've also been um, coming together before that with hybrid online and offline events, so both in person and streaming online. So this community has been building in a lot of different ways over the last few years. And the idea behind it is that Eileen has been making clothing for women to feel comfortable and confident in their bodies. And now this connect is um, inviting us to go a little bit deeper. So this Women Together experience is to go beyond the clothing and, and even beyond the body into the self and into really just connecting with what allows us to feel free and confident in who we are. And I think today's session is really the embodiment of um, of that experience because the topic of centering is something that I think many of us can relate to either needing it or or wanting it. Um, <laughs> so before I go into that a little bit more, I'd love to have everyone just share in the chat your name and well your your name is probably in uh, the zoom function but you can say just hello and where you're coming from. It's so fun to just hear all the different places. I know there are many coming from across the United States, but we've had many also coming from different parts of the world. So um, the chat function is at the bottom of your screen. And if you click on that, you can type directly in to the chat box and just say a little hello and where you're coming from. I am standing on um, Lenape territory, but uh, now known as Cortland Manor. And it's off of the Hudson River. So, um, I am in close proximity to New York City as well, um, and near Irvington where our Eileen Fisher stores are. Um, so I got a private message that, um, that, that it's cloudy in Boston. Um, so thank you. <clears throat> oh, hold on a second. Seems like um, participant can chat with, there we go, everyone publicly. Seems like the settings were not on properly, but there you go. Um, should be good now. There you go. Woohoo! I was wondering, I was like, this is not usual for our community to stay so silent. Okay, here we are in the best of ways. Um, so we've got Nalani in from Chicago, Lisa in from Felton, California. Um, does that mean it's cold, Lisa? Um, I'm going to look for you, but you're not on my top screen, but okay. Um, Kelly from Palos Verdes, California. Amy from Boulder, Colorado, Bianca from Ohio, Shari, Vermont, Kate in Ohio, Shanti from uh, India, Bengaluru, wonderful to have you, Sasha from San Francisco, uh, Hillary, Amelia Island, Florida, Ellen, New Jersey, Kendall, Nashville, North Dakota, Falls Church, Myrtle Beach, it's 44 degrees there. It's 24 degrees here in New York. So it is, I, I woke up this morning, it said real feel six degrees. And I just thought, I don't know if I can go out there, but here we are. So Glen Park in San Francisco, cold and dreary Chicago, um, Nicole in Mill Valley, California, Austining, Risa down the road, um, Jean in New York City, Terry, New Jersey, Oh, thanks, Teresa. Um, or Terry, sorry. <laughs> um, Bettina Ossining. Oh, thanks. Um, I actually normally don't wear my glasses for lots of reasons, but these also aren't my favorite, but there's a lot going on. So I just uh, um, came to it. But here we are. Ellen from Nyack, New York. So many wonderful places. Alabama, California, um, New York, Vermont, Florida. Wonderful. Ontario. I mean, sorry, uh, Awatana. Beautiful, thanks. Wonderful, okay, so we have a wonderful, incredible list of places. 
but all of that is representative of the incredible and wonderful group that has come together here. And there's uh, over over a hundred of us here in this Zoom call, and then we're also streaming out to the YouTube, um, which I know we have a number of places uh, represented there as well. Just a couple more from YouTube, Lake Ontario, Boston, West Virginia, Reno, Nevada, Mount Shasta, California. I also love that there are so many of us that um, that are coming from these places and <clears throat> that we're all not only representing those places, but we're connected to each other. And there's this little, there are these little synchronicities. So we've done the breakout rooms and many people have joined the breakout rooms. And what you find in those is this particular type of magic, but it's also, sometimes we find these synchronicities that we never would have realized, you know, and some of that is just how we relate to each other. But I also, I hosted a session and two people were in the same town in Guatemala joining a, uh, you know, global session. It was stunning. You know, how could you predict that? But so anyway, and they ended up in the same breakout room. So who knows how it happened? They didn't know each other. Um, and I think those kinds of synchronicities are what remind us that we're in the right place at the right time. That's what I have to take from, from those kinds of things. I look for it. So wonderful to have all of the, all of the different um, experiences that we each represent here together in our um, conversation today. And before we start, I'll just land us with a little moment of stillness and we'll do another practice, but a reminder that our tiny practices, these are things that we can take with us throughout the day. And that's just a moment of stillness that just invites us into being in our bodies, being in our place and just landing here in the room together. And as many of you know, I have this little, um, singing bowl that we have in Eileen Fisher conference rooms. And I always hope that the sound comes through, but um, a singing bowl, you know, is just the singing bowl or a chime, anything that you can um, have just to kind of reawaken and kind of shift perspective. Um, it's just a reminder to come back to ourselves. And also as you listen to the bell sound, just um, allowing that sound to kind of become a resonance in in you or a resonance in your own body. So when we hear things or when we feel things, um, we're often resonating in our body, what we're hearing. So just noticing that that experience may be happening for you and that may not be happening for you and that's okay too. So I will ring the sound of the bell to bring us into a moment of stillness and I'll ring the sound to bring us back. You can just close your eyes or lower your gaze if that's comfortable for you and just settle onto your seat, feeling connection to the ground and a connection to the sky, just being here in this body. You can return your attention back to the screen, to this connection with all of us here. And just remember that that connection that we have to ourselves um, 
is also this rooted connection that we have to each other. And we'll go into that a little bit more. Um, so we'll just dive into a little discussion around um, connecting, centering and connecting and what that means. And what we do is often share some of the work of the teachers who have informed us. Um, and then we will do another practice and um, move into breakout rooms, which are really the magic of coming together in this way um, and really hearing each other and supporting one another. So um, what we'd like to do is share a little bit. So what brought you here today? And it could be what brought you here to the Women Together community, um, or it could be this particular topic of what brought you here to centering and, and connecting and what does that really mean for you? So feel free to take any one of those pieces around your intention and just put that into the chat. Um, so again, you can type directly in the chat and just share anything that's coming up for you around centering, connecting, or coming together with this Women Together community. So Elizabeth says she was in her art studio and realized she needed to get centered. Carly here for the connection and stillness. Grace Ann, topic and community. Bianca, support, sisterhood, connection. Continuing to find my center and live out from my center. Shari, focus. Continuing to cultivate resilience from Risa. Elizabeth, connecting. Connection to self leads to connection to divine and my people. Thank you. Leslie, con consistency of connecting with like-minded women. Pat, fighting COVID fatigue and needing to be centered and stay strong. Colleen, connections one at a time brings joy to humanity. Thank you for connecting us together. Thank you for coming together. Nicole, evoking what's sacred and its rhythm, connecting community. Absolutely. Here for the connection and knowing all these women are seeking and valuing creativity is a balm for me. Summer, this feels like taking vitamins for the soul. <laughs> yep, centering feels an important piece of authenticity. Hillary, haven't been here for a while, welcome back. Feeling very off-centered and disconnected late lately, wanting to reach out to have to the hive mind, beautiful. Um, just a wonderful comments here coming in. I'm starting to dis disconnect, so feel I need to rethink. Thank you, Jean. Coming to my center, which is my heart space. Always learning, comes with connecting. Missed a number due to work lately. Um, Marion, wonderful to have you back. So many wonderful groups, I mean, people coming in um, and comments coming in. Wonderful. Okay, so I what I wanna share is, oh, help through this new shutdown. Thanks, Nicole, yeah. Um, yeah. So I want to share a couple of things from our um, some of our teachers. And one of my favorites, for those of you who've done centering sessions with me before, is Wendy Palmer. And she came in early. Um, she's come into some of our in-person events. And um, I've done a number of trainings with her and connections. And she talks a lot about um, centering and not only talks a lot about it, she invites us into the practice of it. And her um, practice of it is so helpful for me personally, because as she says, when we can change the muscle group, so when we can do something physical to shift our, our situation, then we change the hormones that are secreted in our body and that changes the brain function. So it's actually not just a kind of like, oh, I wanna be centered. You know, It's not something out there or something even so physical inside. It's really about, um, catalyzing this capacity that we have to be centered. So I'll go into a little bit of Wendy Palmer's work and some of her way of thinking, which has really supported me um, in understanding what we mean by what, 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 when we say centered, I want to get centered, those kinds of things. What do we actually mean by that? Um, but before I share that, um, there is a, a friend of mine actually sent me a quote yesterday. And it was about centering. And I said, do you know that I'm running a, a session on Women Together tomorrow about centering? And they were like, no, I had no idea. But it was this really beautiful passage. 
Um, so I will read that and share that just so that we have a kind of um, backdrop. So Melissa Pierce says, this is a time for deep, quiet reflection, a time to pause and gather yourself, your center and your abundant strength. As the moment is building and others gather around you, spirit is asking that you stay calm, conserve your strength, find patience and remain aware of those around you. The gates will spread wide and a great space will open before you. Call upon all of your strength and wits to guide you to your next destination. Your lessons learned thus far will serve you in the journey. New lessons will be presented. Tempering your energy is needed now. Center yourself. So I send that to you as a friend sent it to me in a time where I have been needing this kind of I want to be centered, you know, feeling of it. And there are two things, one that have come up for me about what we mean by center yourself. And um, yes, we will put a, a little that um, paragraph in the Zoom chat so you have it. But um, the things that I've been thinking about with centering is for me, on the it represents two different things. So what I do is I end up um, with any of my loved ones, I sort of go into their experience and I fully engross in their experience. Um, whether that's Simba. And he's not gonna stop. Uh, one second. <laughs> Talk about needing to remain centered <laughs> um, when there is a delivery truck coming and the dog goes crazy. So when we cent center ourselves, we are not engrossing ourselves in another experience. So in this moment, for example, my experience is in the delivery truck and in Simba and in who else is in the house that could be, you know, taking care of Simba <laughs> and all of the different things. And so what do I need to do to actually come back to myself rather than being fully engrossed in that experience of another person? And that's not always easy or being as the case may be. And that's not always easy because um, even as I talk about center, there are things that disrupt the dog, the dog barking, the moment of an experience that someone gets sick or, you know, there's an experience that we have that, uh, you know, the, the tea gets knocked over. <laughs> Whatever it is, there's some disruption that happens. And it takes us, it feels like almost off kilter. You know, it takes us out of our own internal experience. And so we often want to try and find a way to come back to that. And at the same time that we have that experience of wanting to come back to that, there's another version of centering, and this is what Wendy Palmer brings into our experience of talking about centering. She says that even within ourselves, there's this difference between personality and center. So she says personality organizes around trying to create security in our lives. It's what allows us to identify as an individual that is separate from other individuals. So it's when we start to say, I am kind of, I am, this is me and that's you and this is happening outside of me. So you might, that's when you start identifying in that way. You might say things like my body is tight, my breath is short, or, you know, the T fell and this is, you know, about me. And, and it, it's often the place that we start to actually manage our interactions with others. So um, it's not the same experience for me as when I'm engrossing myself in somebody else's experience. It's even when I've come back to myself, I'm still, it's all about me. And from that me place, from that center place of personality, I'm connecting, I'm arguing, I'm playing, I'm in some way finding an interaction that's kind of this horizontal interaction. So that's personality. Center is a state of being. 
That's what Wendy Palmer says. It's a state of being, not a place in the body. And she says, center knows that we are naturally interconnected with all things. It allows wisdom, compassion, and courage to flow through us. And she talks about a number of different behaviors that we have to kind of manage our interactions and that you know our personality goes into. She says, often we're so used to these behaviors that we don't realize that they're strategies. We believe that this is how we make our way in the world. So we believe that this is just who we are and how we operate. And sometimes, you know, as an excuse, we'll just say, that's who I am, you know? And the reality is that we can use centering to actually trigger an alternative pattern that allows us to engage in these disruptions, she calls them low-grade threats, in a different way. So it means that we operate, personality and center are both gonna be part of us, but when we can operate from a place of center, rather than from a place that's kind of trying to manage and stay secure and kind of um, you know, deal with things, then we can operate with that wisdom and courage and a sense of openness. So I bring that in because I find that, um, that even when we talk about centering, we're, we're still kind of trying to come back to taking care of myself. And we try to kind of be compassionate and be, you know, all of these things. We're, we're constantly kind of trying to be those things rather than allowing. And the innate wisdom that lives within us as human beings is all already and always there. So it's a question of allowing and making space and connecting to something that is um, a little bit even beyond ourselves. So it's moving from that place of personality. It's moving from the operating in a place of personality to um, a place of, of center. So, um, or space of centering. So I'd love to actually take us through an exercise of doing this. And I've done it many, many times. Wendy says you need to do it over 10,000 times in order to become even good at it. So, so it's something that you can do at any point in the day, talk about a tiny practice. Um, but I'll do a little bit of an extended version just because um, that's what we have the ability to do, so um, so let's do it. And just the invitation is this is something you can do at any time. It's not something that we need to have this long um, experience of, but just an invitation to, to drop in, try it out and um, come back to it whenever you need it. So um, the first thing that we'll do is just tune into the breath. And as we tune into the breath, just for now, feel the breath moving in and out through the nostrils. You can keep your eyes open, that's okay. Or you can close them if that feels comfortable, either way. In and out. And as you feel the breath moving in and out, it's a, the kind of horizontal experience. So maybe the chest rises a little bit and we exhale a little bit. And the reality is that I, I know this statistic that eight out of 10 Americans um, only breathe with the top 10% of their lungs. So we know, and now all of a sudden we're all gonna breathe deeper, right? But we know that most of us are not on a regular basis using even the fullest extent of our lungs, let alone anything beyond that. So just noticing the breath. And now as you notice the breath, we'll begin to deepen the breath. So just filling the belly, filling the chest and the collarbones and exhaling out completely. And just feeling the vertical nature of the breath. So rather than moving this horizontal in and out, moving in an up and down pattern. Just this shift alone shifts something for us.
And then extend the tension and awareness down to the bottom of the feet, to the ground. And extend that attention and awareness to the space above our heads. What we often refer to as sky. And then take your arms and expand your arms out. So just almost as if you're reaching out, just expand your arms out and palms up to the sky. You drop your shoulders away from your ears so that your shoulders are not earrings. They're rooted to the, to the back of the body. Just feel that extension out, even feel the extension in the fingertips. So instead of just having the fingertips like this, just extend them out just a little bit further. Inhale and exhale in this extended place. And Wendy talks about this extended posture actually activating the testosterone in our, mother, in our muscles. It acts, activates our extensor muscles and that's what releases the testosterone hormone. And then begin to focus on the space around you. So again, if your eyes are open or even if you have a soft gaze, just connecting. You don't need to um, pick a thing and kind of stare at it, but just, just sensing the space around us. So there's space out in front. There's space out in front on both sides. And there's space behind us. And perhaps extending the awareness out, not to a particular thing, that plant over there or outside the window, but just extending out and realizing that we are part of that space and the space is part of us. And again, just extend out, feel the openness, feel the space at our back. And as you inhale, uplift. As you exhale, soften. And then think of something that makes you smile. So perhaps it's a little dog monkey running around <laughs> or perhaps it's something or someone else, but just think of something that makes you smile. And as you do that, know that the hormone that gets released when we smile is oxytocin. And that's the connected hormone. That's the hormone that allows us to feel connected to those around us. So just noticing that we are expanded, we are connected, we have things that make us smile. And just be in this place. And as you do that, we'll just take another moment to focus on the breath, moving up and down on a vertical path in this expanded state. And perhaps it will help to just imagine the breath moving up and down the spine. I like to use a little golden ball in my mind. So it's a little golden ball of light or maybe candlelight, whatever is right for you, but just kind of that soft glow. And as you inhale, actually allow the inhale to drop down into the feet and into the ground. So inhale all the way. And exhale, feel the little ball guiding up the spine and out through the crown of your head. And inhale, follow the ball back down the back. And exhale, feel the ball rising again. And we'll just stay here in that con connected, centered space, following the ball of light in our spine up and down just for another few moments.
And then you can let that go when you're ready and perhaps just keep the energy quality of centering. And we'll just do one more little exercise just to notice the difference in ourselves. It's something that uh, we've done before in our sessions, but it helps me. So I'm gifting it. Um, and it's something I learned also from Wendy. Um, so what we'll do is just contract our bodies. So often we feel small, we feel contracted, but just going in for a moment to that personal space of contraction just feeling it's so easy to go back here. It's so easy, maybe tucking the chin, raising the shoulders. And then just perhaps like me, you've taken all your air in and you're just squeezing it. Just exhale, drop the shoulders, inhale. So we'll just do the quick version. We're gonna inhale for uplift. Exhale, soften. Think of something that makes you smile. And that's it. Inhale, uplift. Exhale, soften. Think of something that makes you smile. And if we can do that just a few hundred times a day, we'll pretty soon be quite good at it. So even if you just remember three times a day, whatever, um, but maybe tie it to something that you already do, like brushing your teeth or um, or a meal, but just remembering that. And I love Lisa just did a little um, warming up of the chest, which is really good at this time in our um, need for lung capacity in a lot of ways. So thank you, Lisa. Let's, if you'd like to just do a little like connection with your chest, maybe a little um, oxytocin, I mean, dopamine um, rub here <laughs> just can help too. And just coming back to, to knowing that we have this body that holds us here, but that we're also connected um, beyond far beyond that so if you have a journal and you have um a pen or paper either way we'll just take a moment to write down to jot down a few things nancy said unclenching my jaw yes that's a reminder every day um i find when i scroll through any social media my jaw just gets tighter and tighter and i have to remind myself yes so <laughs> um so um you can take your paper and pen and just in your centering practice, maybe write down um, what, what was helpful for you. What was the thing that made you smile? And maybe just list three things that make you smile so that you can go back to them at any time. And then perhaps it was the, you know, inhale, uplift, exhale, soften, think of something that makes you smile. Perhaps it was that. Um, or perhaps you have something that, that really works for you to be able to find your um, centering practice. But just jot down a note about what it is that is the practice for you. So um, if you need the Wendy Palmer version again, you can probably you can find it in her book. I'll share more about her book. She has a number of them, but the, I'll tell you the one that I've been using. Um, but so thinking of something, so uplift, inhale, exhale, soften, think of something that makes you smile, or anything um, that you might want to um, do that to help you. And then the final um, thing to jot down is when you might need this most. And I remember Eileen talked about wiggling her toes. So she um, does a practice that awakens the polyvagal nerve, which is just wiggling her toes. And I said, Eileen, but how do you remember <laughs> to do that in those triggered moments? And um, so that's the key. And I think writing that down in our journal might be a step. So just think of a time where you know you need a centering practice. Um, for me, it's when I'm in the kitchen and I'm trying to do everything for everyone or 
you know, whatever, one of, one of those moments where I just need to remind myself and come back to center. Um, and yeah, just connect up with something larger than, than just, um, whatever it is I'm trying to do in that moment. So just think about a couple of places where you might need that and you can write that down. And then um, in Zoom, we'll start to move into breakout rooms in just a moment. Um, so take another moment to jot down when you might use a centering practice. And what I'll say also is that this is the book, it's called um, Dragons and Power, and it's by Wendy Palmer. And um, she's also created a number of other books and um, a practice on leadership embodiment. But it has, this book has the just keys to centering um, that have been really useful for me. So, um, so feel free to uh, use any practice that's right for you. And what we'll do now in Zoom is we'll move into breakouts for about 18 minutes and we'll just share with each other um, what's keeping us centered right now and what's taking us off center right now. So both of those things, you can share your name and where you're coming from. And just a reminder that um, to hold this kind of centered space really also means giving each other the gift of listening. Um, and really opening the if a few minutes each where um, I often say that we don't necessarily know what the other person had for breakfast this morning. So there's a high chance we don't know the rest of their lives either. And, um, and what we'll do is just give each other the benefit of the doubt and enough time to speak. So enjoy your time together in Zoom. YouTube, we'll see you again soon. Um, and we'll be together in the Eileen Fisher uh, Women Together space. So womentogether.com slash conversations, and um, we'll be able to connect there. So thank you all, and we'll see you in 18 minutes as you join your, your breakout groups.